Recently, Apple announced these MacBook Pros with some bold claims. Gets up to 21 hours of video playback, which is 10 additional hours and the longest battery life ever on a Mac notebook. Are you sure about that, Apple? Come on, someone had to test it. So I set up this new 16-inch MacBook Pro, which has an M1 Max chip, to play this video clip for 21 hours. And the 16-inch model gets up to 21 hours of video playback. And I did exactly what Apple said. Wi-Fi off and brightness at eight clicks from the bottom. And I unplugged for a long time. Gets up to 21. Okay, not quite 21 hours, but wow. That's long enough to last you a 15 hour flight from New York to Shanghai and then some. Although if you were planning to use Wi-Fi and chat and surf the web, then you'd be looking at more of an eight hour flight from New York to Munich. So why did I do all this? Well, because the promise of a truly all day laptop is here and you don't even need bigger batteries to do it all. The real savings comes from Apple's shift from Intel chips to its own M1 Pro and M1 Max chips. So when Apple said, and the longest battery life ever on a Mac notebook. There was only one thing to do, testing. These are crooked, aren't they? Okay, before I get into those test results, let's talk about these, which have the dream laptop design, at least in comparison to the old MacBook Pros. There is a full-size SD card slot and an HDMI port. Sure, the SD card still sticks out, but I'll take it. There's a row of real function keys, RIP touch bar. And yes, the MagSafe charger is back. You can still charge via these USB-C ports too. The XDR screens are bright and beautiful, and the size of the screens are really the main thing that separates these two. Oh, and price. The 14 inch starts at $2,000 and the 16 at 2,500. Really pricey. I could live without this notch around the webcam though. To make the bezels around the screen smaller, they had to fit the 1080p webcam in someplace. Don't get me wrong, the camera quality is way better than the previous laptops, but still no iPhone selfie camera. The bigger leaps though are inside these machines with Apple's own M1 Pro and M1 Max chips. The chips are incredibly fast. I couldn't get these laptops to slow down even when multitasking things like video editing, gaming, and more. And when I asked Apple's Tom Boger what the biggest improvement in going from Intel to Apple was, he said, I sum it up in a very simple term of performance per watt. Uh, it's it's game changing. What does that even mean? Allow me to explain with this stuff. Let's say this container of Powerade is well, power or watts. And well, I need performance. Cheers. Sipping the watts for power and then using the power to do things. Power it up. Intel chips based on x86 architecture have good performance, but are more power thirsty. So to do this high performance, I've got to chug more power. Intel processor. Apple's chips based on ARM architecture have good performance too, but are more power efficient. So to do this high performance, I need less power and I can just sip the watts. Like a fine wine. So you get it. Using its own chips, Apple gets more performance per watt. Or in other words, it can have the same battery size as a computer with an Intel chip but that battery can theoretically last longer. Okay, back to computers and these actual tests. The old Intel 16 inch MacBook Pro and the new Apple chip 16 inch MacBook Pro both have the same 100 watt hour battery. Take a look at this chart on my video battery tests though. The machines with Apple chips last at least five hours longer on both streaming and local video playback tests. About that 21 hours of battery life. Apple's fine print says it got there using a 16 inch test machine with an M1 Pro processor, a step down from the M1 Max in my unit. Plus there's more that's not even in that fine print, like turning off the keyboard backlight and the true tone display. And the company said that the white background in my video sample may have drained extra juice. When I got an identical MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro chip, adjusted all the settings and used Apple's recommended test videos, just $60 plus on iTunes, guess what? 21.5 hours. But here's the thing, video rundown tests never tell the whole battery story. It's just not that intensive of a processing task. It's more like stretching than jumping jacks. 
Plus, we all use our laptops differently. So I kept track of the battery life when I used Safari, Slack, and played music in Apple Music. The 16 inch ran for eight hours, the 14 inch for six and a half hours. That was at least three hours longer than Apple's Intel machines. When I did that test with Chrome, things dropped by an hour or so. Nope, not the promised double digit hours. Although when I got out this bad boy, a 290 watt battery, I was able to finally hit those. And yes, I realize it's basically just like being plugged into the wall. The 13 inch MacBook Pro with the M1 chip announced last year actually lasted just as long as those laptops in my daily use. So I'll throw that back at you, Apple. When you say, and the longest battery life ever on a Mac notebook. If you've got Wi-Fi off and brightness at 50% and videos downloaded. But please do not confuse this with complaining. After years of slimming down laptops and cramming in small batteries, Apple's got a great strategy here. Power efficient chips and big batteries. I just wish the fine print was large print. And the longest battery life ever. This is how it's gonna be for all Apple events and the new now. MacBook Pro now supports